Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to another Tea Pop with me. Because I asked you guys again on Instagram what you'd like me to talk about this week while I repot. And let me just say, y'all are real thirsty. Like, real thirsty. I don't know what's, I don't know whether it's like quarantine, just getting everyone just like fired up. I don't know. But you guys are real thirsty. So I've picked some topics to talk about today. I've got them written down in front of me because there's a lot. So I don't know how much we're going to get through. Also, this isn't necessarily for show, although it, it kind of looks good. This is basically a load of stuff I'm reporting today. I've got a load of different things to report. So what I think I might do is I'm going to go down this list. There's not many things, but the subjects are kind of like, you know, bigger subjects. So this here is my philodendron luxuriance. She's looking very sexy. She's definitely looking better than what she was. She's not really turning down over anymore like she was in my philodendron red plant index. She's looking much better and she's getting much bigger. So that's awesome. She is a thirsty little bitch, so I've actually got a self-watering pot for her, but not the usual self-watering pots that I normally use. I have a different one, which is much cheaper, so I'm going to talk about that when I put her in that. The reason I'm putting her in that is, of course, as I've just mentioned, she is thirsty as hell. Like, if anybody owns one of these, I know you're going to agree with me. These are just, these are insane. They really are. Next to that, I have a wonderful small form Monstera Aurea. This is like super pot bound. I didn't really want to repot it because it's growing, but honestly, it's getting a bit ridiculous. Like I can see from here that there's roots just coming out of the pot. Next to that, I have this amazing, I think you can see it here, Anthurium crystallinum. Let me just pick her up because she's, she's absolutely amazing. This is, oh my God. This is my Anthurium crystallinum. I think I did lift up the pot and I see roots coming out the bottom. She's been in this pot for quite a while, so I'm thinking, you know what, let's have a look. She may need repotted, she may not. I suspect yes, but I'm not really sure. So she might have a pot. Does she have a pot to go into, though? I didn't even get a pot for her to go into. Hang on, wait a minute. Guys, I think I'm missing a pot. Let me put this down. I'll get a pot before I start. Finally, I have this big Thai constellation. Now, you may notice uh, that this is, uh, this, this is a lot. I don't know if you can see that in there. Can you? Yeah, you get a pretty good idea. Look at that. I'll hold it up in front of me there. Get a load of that shit. So that really needs repotted sooner rather than later. I do have a Lechoise, Lechuza. I still can't remember how you pronounce it. That's terrible, isn't it? I have one of those self-warring pots down there as well. So I think I'm about ready to start. I'm just going to go grab one more self-watering pot because I think that's what I wanted to put her in. I'm not sure anymore, you know. What did I mean to put her in? Yeah, okay, we'll stick her in a self-watering pot as well. I'm just gonna go get one, I'll be right back. I'll tell you what the weird thing is, guys. My microphone allows me to move away from the camera, so what you're actually hearing right now is me fumbling around in my little office down the hall. But for you, it's gonna sound like I'm right there with you. How about that, huh? Weird coolest microphone in the world. I got really, really sick of actually having to like plug it in um, while I was, you know, filming. I'd have to like literally plug it into the camera and I would be laved to the camera, but now I don't have to do that. I think let's do the luxuriance first. I think that might be a good idea. So this is going to be a raw mess. So I'm going to take her out of her decorative pot. This girl is looking absolutely amazing. I don't know if it comes off how beautiful. Yeah, it does. It really does. Look at that. Honest to God. So proud of this one. She's growing really nice in this pot as well, but I think I'd like to get her in self-watering. She's not necessarily pot bound, but honestly, she really needs more water than I can give her. So let's go self-watering. Why not? Before I answer any questions, this is the new self-watering system I'm trying out. So this, I will link below where I got these from. I can't give you my opinion yet because this is the first time I'm about to use this. But this, I think, is it tea for you? Something like that. It's the same company that I, that I used to use for my gray kind of pots with the saucers. It's the same company. And I can't remember the size of these pots, but they do these, it's like a four pack. And I, I can't remember how much this was. I'll put the price on the screen now of how much they were. I feel like they were maybe about 15 pounds. I don't know. I could be lying. But you got four in a pack. They do feel significantly cheaper than the Schwaza, but you know, they don't look so bad at a distance. So the first question while I'm trying to get this girl out of the pot is, are you considering an Oblica update video? And the easy answer to that is yes, I am. I'm actually going to do very soon, I'm going to do the, what is it called? The biob review video because I know everyone's asking me for it. 
But I feel like what I'm going to do, because I'll probably film them both at the same time because I need to move the biob. I will probably film them both at the same time. So I'll do the oblique update and the bio review. And I will probably put out the oblique update, you know, on that Tuesday, whenever it is. And then the bio review will be on a Friday. So I thought that was a really good way of doing it. So that's probably how I'm going to do it. How I'm scared to touch her, you know, because she's kind of like wedged the fuck in. Oh, yes, boy. Yes, boy. What I'm gonna do, because this company don't give you any gravel, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of lecker. Now this was gonna be all for one pot. However, I haven't brought enough because I didn't realize I was using two pots. So I'm gonna put half of this in the bottom of here just to give it kind of like a buffer um, to take up the water. So, right, this is a very simple operation. You may have realized this. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to pad it. I'm going to decide where I want the water engaged. I suspect I'd prefer it behind her. I don't know which way to do this, actually. I might... Hmm, what is a good way? That's kind of annoying me, actually. Do, okay, this, they, here's a difference from Le Chois that I'm already seeing. And that is that the water engage is like a little bit kind of further in the pot. And it's a little bit irritating if you're just trying to do basically what I'm doing. I just don't want to disturb the roots, that's all. It's not a very deep pot either. I'm noticing that. Sorry guys, I'm not meaning to give you like a review, but this is literally the first time I've used these pots. So I just want you to know like what I'm thinking as it's going. I also don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing. No, I'm sorry. Luxurians is gonna make that very difficult. I'll try and turn it around for you so you can see what I'm doing. I'm very gently loosening the edge soil just so I can kind of place it, I guess. There we go, I'm being very gentle because I know there's roots around the edge. Right, so we need some extra soil. So if I can just grab a handful. Right, next topic. A lot of people were asking me how much I actually paid for my super large Monstera that's in the shop. And the answer to this um, might surprise you. I don't normally talk about how much I paid for things, but on this occasion, I will tell you, I actually paid, get ready for it, 150 English pounds for that large Monstera. I think it was online, it was on an auction on eBay. And it was on for, I think it started at 50. And then obviously I bid on it and I won at 150. And that's including like, you've got to go and collect it. Cause I mean, no one's delivering that shit. You feel me? So honestly, I got an absolutely sweet deal. And the subsequent Monstera I bought after that, that you saw in the video, that was a hundred. So I was like the luckiest person on planet earth to find a big Monstera like that for literally 150 pounds, that's crazy. So it's like bargain of the century. In fact, I challenge y'all to find a bargain better than that because, oh my goodness, I'm so excited to have her, honestly. She's just the best thing ever. Still haven't named her. <laughs> I've just been busy. There's no real reason to that, but I need to name her real quick. Otherwise, she's just gonna end up being this thing. Now this is, this soil level is like too high for me, if I'm totally honest with you. I don't like to put my soil all the way up to the top of the pot. I don't know why. I think it's just more if I water and I water bottom down and I just tip a load of water in, it's gonna be, you know, fine. Um, so I don't usually like to do that. I also, I'm thinking about putting lecker on the top of all my pots just to deter like gnats and stuff like that if I put lecker on like the soil level. So I'm thinking about that. But on this occasion, as this plant is a crawler, I'm going to leave it like this because I actually think it benefits the plant being like this. So on this occasion, I'm gonna leave her be. I know that was probably very irritating to watch because these leaves are huge, but here she is in her new self-watering pot. There are some differences with Le Choiseur, but in terms of functionality, obviously it's exactly the same. They're definitely shallower though. So depending on the plant, that's either gonna be a good thing or a bad thing. So I'm gonna leave her there because she's kind of done. I might actually put her in this outer pot again. Oh my, oh my, oh my God. Oh yeah, I'm not getting her out again, holy shit. This is kind of like a two in one. It was like, does someone look after your plants when you're not there? Slash, you know, how many people are working for you? Do you have like a team of people or is it just you? You know, what's the crack? What's the tea? Basically, I have one person that works for me. His name is Simon. He does all of the emails. He also packages the plants and sends them out. So he picks the plants, he sends them out, he does the emails. In terms of like looking after the plants and stuff like that, most of the time if I water them, I know they're gonna be okay for like 
kind of leaning on a week. I can definitely get away with about five days or so without being there at all. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. I do have a wonderful young lady managing my Instagram. I do occasionally pop on my Instagram to post things or to post images, but not always. I do have somebody actually monitoring that. So if you message my Instagram, Nine times out of 10, you're not speaking to me, you're actually speaking to Charlotte, who manages my Instagram. So we have Simon, we have Charlotte, and we have me. So this isn't something that people have asked me, this is more just, you know, some, some stuff has changed with the shop, I guess. So I kinda wanted to tell you about it because what better way to tell you guys than right now, right? On video. So it is with a semi-heavy heart, if I'm honest, that I've actually had to change the returns policy um, with the Red Point shop. And I'm not, I'm not ecstatic about it, but it, it kind of had to be done. Um, there's not a lot of ways to say it really other than how it is. And it's no disrespect to anybody. So I'm not trying to like target people or disrespect people. But if you didn't know prior, prior to, you know, you know, last week or something like that, I have a policy on my website that I guarantee all plants for 14 days after delivery. So once you get the plant, if it dies in two weeks or it suffers or anything like that, you have me kind of on your side. I will look after you. I will make sure that any problems are rectified. I don't know how many plant shops do that. I have no idea, but that is what my shop does or did. Obviously, you know, shit happens. Like sometimes the box is kicked around. Sometimes the box is delayed. Sometimes it just, plants just fucking don't like being shipped. It happens, okay? And although I understand that, I feel like there's not a lot of ways to say this, but honestly, a lot of people were kind of taking the piss. That's how we say it in England. So basically, oh, I'll just talk about these roots for one second. Oh God. I'll just talk about these roots super quickly. They, that's, that's ready to be repotted. I don't know why I was so worried. I'm just gonna pop that straight in. So I had customers like, honestly just smashing up plants stuff like that don't get me wrong a lot of times when things have gone wrong it's it's certainly not the customer's fault or anything like that i'm not saying that so please don't think this video is me just you know shitting on customers it's really not there's a reason why i have that policy and that's because i want to look after you guys do you know what i'm saying i don't want anybody to get shit plants i really don't but some people were taking the piss i have seen it I've had all manner of customers doing, quite frankly, weird twisted shit to get things like discounts. I don't know why there is a trend for that, but I've definitely noticed there is a trend for that. And it sucks because I want to help my customers. I want to be there for my customers, but too many people are abusing the system. It's like if I buy a plant from any shop and say I kind of half smash it up a little bit and then I go, look, this is arrived in terrible condition. I don't think this is acceptable. I want a discount. So my shop in that situation will of course say to a customer, you know, that is not acceptable. Please send the plant back to us and we will refund your return shipping and the plant, or alternatively, we can still refund your return shipping, of course, and we can offer you a replacement plant. You can always tell the customers that are trying to screw you over because they use this, they use similar language and they say similar things in order to try and get certain things. And I really can't go into detail here because I'm not about to shit on these customers, even though they've kind of taken the piss a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to give you an overview of why things have changed. Long story short, people have been heavy handed. They've been tearing up root balls, repotting things in pots that are five times too big and everything else and they're killing plants. And although I want to guarantee the plant's health, I'm not in, like, I'm not superhuman. I can't protect you from that. So I have had to change the returns policy on the shop. And that returns policy is available on my TNCs. If you want to go read it, that's absolutely fine. But it basically says, I now guarantee my plants for a 10 day period uh, after delivery. So after you have received the plant. And the plant during these 10 days is to be kept in the original pot and in the original substrate. If you remove that plant from that pot and you encounter problems with it within 10 days, it null and voids the, that warranty, basically. And I, I, I'm sad that I have to do it, guys, but I can't have people doing what they were doing. It was just getting ridiculous. And sometimes I just think I'm too nice. <laughs> so you can go and read that on the website if you wish, but there's no real 
you know, anything there that I haven't already said. It's basically that the, the guarantee period has gone down from 14 days to 10 days and you must keep your plant in the original pod. You cannot fuck with it, basically. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm just disappointed, but you know, there's some people out there that just want to get mad discounts, I guess. But again, not discrediting people that have genuinely had issues. I'm genuinely not, so please don't think I am. I'm really not. But some people were just taking the piss. I've had to change some stuff up. Because if a plant has arrived in your home, you keep it there for 10 days and you don't touch it and it dies, that's definitely on me. If you start repotting it and tearing it up and investigating all the roots and going through with a fine tooth comb and wondering why it's now yellowing and it's not happy, I can't help you there. Do you know what I'm saying? So. I'm genuinely very sorry, but things had to change, guys. They really did. So anyone that purchases from my shop in the future, that is now the case. So please be aware. Yeah, reflecting on a lot of the things that you guys were asking me about, my goodness, like the shit I got in January for speaking my mind, I don't know where those people went, but it seems all you guys want to do is hear all the tea and all the gossip and all the rants. So, I mean, shit, stuff goes down each week, but trust me, it's not necessarily stuff I can talk about. I guess I could divulge some stuff. I guess it, it really does depend. But a lot of people have been asking me about the darker side of owning a plant shop. And is there any tea? Is there any drama? Holy shit, guys. I don't know where to start. I seriously don't know where to start. And I'm being genuine about that. Some people may attempt to disagree with me on this, but trust me, the plant world, not only the shop world, but the plant world is fucking full of tea, misdemeanors, whether that's between like YouTubers, subscribers, between shops, between YouTubers and um, sponsorships and companies like that. There is so much shit that goes down, it's not even funny. I think a lot of YouTubers don't necessarily talk about it because we are not fearful, I guess fearful in a way, but slightly concerned that we are kind of exuding negativity, shall we say. Um, there's a lot of shit that we deal with behind the scenes. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Those that speak to me know I'm looking at you. But there's a lot of shit that goes down generally. And I think we just, we don't talk about it because I think we just don't want to seem like we're perpetuating anything or just promoting negativity in any way. Now, the thing about me and obviously some others as well, I speak as I find. I have my limits and I have things that I will and won't say. Uh, I learned that this year, as you all know. But some things I feel like I should say. So there's, there's so many things that this encapsulates. I don't even know where I'm going with this because I don't know what I can and can't talk about yet because I don't know what's good. So I'm not going to speak on the youtube -y side of it because I don't want to kind of lead the, the plant community down that, but I feel like if I speak on shops, it's a little bit more like disconnected from all that, if you feel me. Like, I don't know how many plant YouTubers have shops, but generally speaking, do you know what I mean? It's not quite as involved. So I don't want to like bring anybody else's shit into anything because I'm not about that. So what I can speak about, I guess, is the shop and the dark side of owning a shop. And it's, God, I don't even know where to start, honestly. There's good days and bad days. Um, there's a lot more drama to it than you might imagine. I will tell you that for nothing. There is a lot more drama to it. But generally speaking, shops at the minute, I don't even know. I guess I just have gripes about it. Now, the thing is, guys, the thing is, I don't really appreciate other shops copying off me to the extent that they are. And I don't really give a shit if I get a barrage of comments and hate for saying what I'm about to say, okay? Because honestly, it's fucking true. But the amount of shops that are copying off me nowadays are getting a bit silly. Like it's actually getting silly. Oh my God, I can't get this out. Oh my God, this is gonna be stuck. I think I need a spoon to dig it out. Quick break for a second because, oh shit. Oh no, we've got it, we've got it, we've got it. Great, great, great. I was seriously worried there. The amount of fucking shops that copy off me each week is reaching stupid levels. The amount of shops with logos I see that are basically like so similar to my logo, it's not even funny. 
right? When I made that logo, you know, a year and a bit ago, I labored over that. And when I did make that logo, I went out and I looked at other plant shops and I noticed how different my logo was to all of the other plant shops. It was kind of a bold move, if I'm honest, because it was a black and white logo. There was no green inside. There's no monstera leaves. Like you couldn't necessarily see what it was. Even the oblique leaf doesn't look full on like a leaf. It's a bit more removed from that. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit more minimal. It's a little bit more graphic design than what it would be. It, you know, it's less like a botanic logo. Does that make any sense? But I worked really hard to make sure that my shop was unique. And I just feel like if you're gonna start a plant shop, for fuck's sake, do your own thing. There are so many ways to brand and stand out and be unique. Why you got a copy of somebody else? Seriously, it's even down to the websites that people are making. They are so strikingly similar to mine. Now, honestly, I am all for being inspired of other people's work and creativity. That's cool. So I'm not knocking that. So please don't think I am. But there is a fucking difference between being inspired and straight up ripping something off to the point where I had to speak to a seller of a shop maybe, I don't know, less than a month ago because their design was so similar to my shop. I had somebody message me on Instagram saying, did you open this shop? It looks like a sister company to yours. I didn't know you opened a new shop. Is it, is it to ship to US? What's it for? I saw this logo and I was like, shit, that's not okay. That's really not okay. That's crossing a line. Now, don't get me wrong. All these other shops kind of dance around the line, which legally it's fine. I'm allowed to be pissed about it, but I can't do anything about it. We all know this. So I get it. I can be pissed about that. They're not necessarily doing something wrong. They're just not really being creative, right? We can say that. They're not doing anything wrong. They're not being creative. But when you do something that is so fucking similar to my shop and somebody approaches me on Instagram asking if that is my company, you are unfortunately infringing on my trademark. So I figured this might happen a year ago when I started my shop and I thought about it for a while. I sought legal advice and I decided to go down the proper channels and get the logo trademarked because I fucking knew someone would do this. I didn't realize this many people would do this. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of people have tried to do this. I don't want to go into a full on rant about it. And I'm well aware I've probably got about 50 dislikes right now just for even being annoyed about this because there will be so many people, probably half of them owning these shops that say, look, you don't own, you know, you don't own a design. You don't own a logo, blah, blah, blah. You don't own a concept. And it's like, well, actually, bitch, I can do. Because I have the trademark, it means that other people cannot do that if, if their logo is too similar to mine, if their logo could be deemed as a sister company or as some sort of affiliate of my brand, of my business. Because this would mean that somebody could open up a shop very similar to mine and people may or may not buy from that shop thinking they're buying from a sister company of me or they're buying from my shop. That is not legal. That is not allowed. That would be a situation where you'd have to go down the legal route. I guess that's a little nice little nugget to bring up for anyone that's thinking about ripping off my logo. Um, it's trademarked. So if you're going to rip it off, make sure you change it just enough, I suppose, like everyone else. Don't step over the line. I thought about this all year and it just happens that uh, it really kicked me into touch when somebody decided to create something very fucking similar to my logo last year. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Some of you may not. I cannot divulge it because I will be torn limb from limb. But last year, somebody thought it was a really fucking good idea to come out with practically my shop. Um, I believe they changed their mind on that since, which is a good move, by the way, because I would have had to pursue legal action. Sorry, but I would. What do you expect me to do? But yeah, that's kind of what gave me the kick up the ass, so to speak, and uh, sort of kicked me into touch with getting things trademarked and getting things moving. So I wanted to do it the entire time after I began the shop. After that, I was kind of like, oh, oh shit. Well, I'm going to have to do something now because shit, you know, if this one person thinks it's cool to fucking do it, loads of people will. So that's the tea on that shit. 
Again, if you're gonna start your own plant shop, stand out, be different. Because honestly, by the time you get through all these shops with black and white fucking minimal logos, you're not gonna stand out. It's gonna become saturated. You need to think about that if you're starting your own business. People always ask me for business advice. There's some business advice for you. Be different, be unique, stand out, do something different. Before my shop, there weren't really many shops around selling just rare plants. Most shops were selling, you know, a subset of what they had was rare. So they would have normal plants in, maybe slightly unusual plants, and then every so often they'd do like a rare plant launch, right? If you guys remember that, that used to be how it was. Now, obviously the game has changed completely. That's cool and all, but all I'm saying is guys, be your own entity. I think I might stop there today. I know I've got the tie to do, but I've kind of run out of soil and it's gonna be a bit of an issue, but we got through most of it, I think. Let me just put this back here. I realize this looks kind of ugly, don't get me wrong, but I think it's just, it's got to be. So yeah, plant shops, plant world, honestly, brutally honest with you because I don't know if anyone will tell you or feels that it's okay to tell you this, but there's a lot of shit that goes on. Um, I realize I'm probably gonna get a ton of shit for this, but you guys want me to speak honestly, you want me to speak frankly, you want me to tell the truth. And I must always tell the truth because the second I stop telling the truth, you guys have no trust in me, right? So what's the point? So I'm saying as much as I can say without stepping on anybody's toes. I'm not trying to cause any shit here. I'm genuinely fucking really not. So please don't, you know, don't go off and create narratives. Don't go off seeking information. Please don't, please. I just want to be able to talk about stuff here and be frank with you guys, but to not, you know, bring tons of people into it or just get things messy. That is genuinely not my intent with these kinds of videos. More and more people are asking me each week to speak openly and to speak honestly. There is a line that I must walk and I'm learning to walk it. I might not get it right all the time as we've seen before, but there is a line to walk and I'm trying to walk it, so. I have so much respect for each and every one of you that watches my videos. All I'm trying to do here is just basically give you what you're asking for and I guess try and walk that line respectfully but still giving you the truth of the situation. Because that's actually a very hard thing to do, to walk a line and only say so much, but still tell the truth. Because often the truth is just black and white, right? It's not sugar-coated. So that's a bit difficult. I will always try and do my best to just give you what you need to know without dragging people into it or stirring a lot of shit up. Because seriously, that is not what I'm trying to do. So please understand that. Uh, I think that's it for this video. Um, we didn't get through everything. I keep having to like uh, push my hair back because it's so hot in here. I think my hair is sticking to my makeup. It's not ideal. I didn't get to the tie. I will probably do that next time. I did get to the lovely Crystallinum. I did get to the Luxurians and I did get to my lovely big monster that I did kind of just slap in the pot. I, I don't know if you're watching that, but I did kind of just slap it in. I planted it quite deep just because I know that that was a bit of a jump up for the Monstera, but I also know that this guy can handle it because I just know, I know my plants. I know that I can handle that jump. So that is what I'm doing. By the way, I was gonna save this for a growth update video, both this and this and this. You will get that anyway. But this is how the yellow monster is doing. It's looking really, really good. It's getting a little bit more variegated each time, which is great. I feel like this side on the left of the plant is more like speckled variegation. And I feel like this side on the right is more sectoral. But this leaf here has a little bit of sectoral and a little bit of speckled. So I'm like praying that it just starts to even out and we get a bit of both. It's looking pretty good so far. So that is her down there. Let me get a quick drink before I say goodbye to y'all because I'm gonna have serious anxiety uploading this video. So wish me luck guys. I hope you have a great week. And I will see you on Friday. Bye.